In September of 2023, we took a real vacation to Uruguay. And while we were there, we crossed the River Plate to see a little bit of Buenos Aires since we were so close. Oh, Terminal T, because we're here early because we were listening to Corinna. Yeah, about two hours before our flight. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And we had no, no security line. Check-in was almost instant. It was awesome. It's our first flights to Miami. Highly recommend that you get there. Early. <laughs> okay, so our first flights to Miami. It's a couple hours, and then a layover, and then a flight to Sao Paulo, and then a layover, and then a flight to Montevideo. This is a lot longer than we usually so I said this was a real vacation because usually when we travel we've just moved Randy's home office to some other location and he's still working but on this trip he only had to work one half a day are we going to Uruguay um, well because <laughs> you found a cheap fare to Uruguay that is why really yeah but I also heard that it was a very relaxing place to go yeah. And we're not going in beach season, but really you can go year round on empty beaches. Yeah. Have good food, no pressure. Yeah. So I'm not expecting it to be really beautiful. I'd be very surprised if I find it beautiful. Pleasantly surprised. And I've been working. I have you don't no know. idea what to expect. All right, so we're in Miami and we have a long layover, which means we get Cuban coffee. Portado. And guava and cheese pastry. Okay, now we've moved to the island grill because we have all this long layover. <laughs> We're trying more Cuban food. Well, yeah, South American anyway. Ceviche. I don't think this martini is, but it's good. Uruguay is a relatively small country just south of Brazil and north of Argentina, but it's stable and prosperous and has a tourist infrastructure that makes it easy to visit. When we were there, most people spoke to us in English because their English is better than our Spanish. And also there's an accent in Uruguay and Argentina we were unfamiliar with. About five days in, one of our hosts explained it to us and that made understanding and speaking much easier. I think you could enjoy a trip even if you didn't speak any Spanish. Everyone at the hotel spoke English. Um, some people spoke Spanish with me, but I think they could have switched to English if I hadn't been trying. The Hotel Montevideo is in the Positos neighborhood, and the theme is old movies. It was fun. I enjoyed that hotel thoroughly. All right, so we're rested and walking down the street. Going to go do a little exploring this afternoon. Montevideo is a very pleasantly sized city of 1.8 million. Ever filming, ever walking. I know, and I don't want to hit other people like these bicyclists that get biased. Yeah, you can run for hours. Okay, so I really feel my age when I'm trying to film and walk at the same time. There's eight miles of waterfront walkway in Montevideo, and our goal that afternoon was just to enjoy as much of it as we could before it got dark. It was a gorgeous early spring day. This wasn't like walking around in Italy where people dress up and try to look better than their neighbors. It was really relaxing, just like I'd heard Uruguay would feel. And a word about relaxing in Uruguay. You'll see on the internet that it's one of the first countries in the world to legalize pot, and that's true, but they don't sell to tourists, and honestly, I smelled pot less there than I do here in Atlanta, where it isn't legal. All right, so we're enjoying walking along the Playa. Positos, yeah. Yeah, now we're in a dog park. <laughs> Which makes us miss our dogs. Yeah. Okay, so you've got an area over there that dogs can play. There's no fences. And then people play in soccer here. And then right across this path. There's a playground and it says no dogs allowed and there are no dogs. See, at home, if you had a dog park with no fence, 
That would be chaos, actually. There wasn't much in the way of interesting architecture along the waterfront, except for the alchemist house, Castillo Pitamilio. We didn't have a time, chance to tour it that day, but it is open from Tuesday to Sunday. Our first impressions of Montevideo were all great. There was a kids' soccer game going on. There was this group on bikes and rollerblades. I'm not sure exactly what it was about, but it looked fun. The River Plate is a really interesting river to see. Up around Buenos Aires, it's 30 miles wide, and I'm not sure exactly how wide it is at Montevideo, but at its widest, it's over 130 miles. It's the widest estuary in the world. Our only other destination that afternoon was a gluten-free bakery. It's a local chain called Gut. There are some in Buenos Aires too. And then we were back to our hotel. All right, I'm gonna talk to you. Hello, 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 hello. We thought it was one of those fun talk through things, but we never could make it work and thought maybe we were actually just entertainment for the people eating in the restaurant. This is a view from our hotel room. Rooftop bar. Yeah. In this two week trip, we spent two nights in Montevideo and we loved both of our hotels. Also, that Sofitel at the casino in Carrasco looks interesting, and if I ever went back, I might stay there. Prices are about the same as the U.S. The hotels may have been a little bit cheaper. We were there in the off-season, though. We're walking to dinner in Lucito's neighborhood. We're going to Tandoori, which is kind of, I think, Pan-Asian, Middle Eastern. It's not Indian. It's not strictly right Indian. We heard a lot from folks that there were reasons to be concerned about safety in Montevideo. We felt safe almost all the time, except a little bit in the old city. But we did notice the restaurant had a locked door and we had to be buzzed in. Really early the next morning, we were taking a ferry straight from Montevideo to Buenos Aires. You can also take a bus up to Colonia and then take a shorter ferry ride but we were taking the fast ferry two and a half hours from Montevideo to Buenos Aires. Our hotel had a great breakfast, including good gluten-free choices. The weather had taken a turn for the worse, and if you watch our next video about Buenos Aires and returning to Uruguay, You'll see that if I had known then what I know now, I would have been nervous that morning about the weather. As it was, I was just nervous about the check-in process, about checking our luggage and getting to the right place at the right time. Turns out I had no reason to be nervous because people were very helpful. We got there so early because I missed it. We made it to the port on time. We have a copy before our ferry to Buenos Aires comes. I was very nervous about getting here too late because our ferry ticket said last check-in was two hours before the ferry. That actually turned out to be when it opened, but I'm still glad we got here early. I am really not a wildlife photographer, so I'll spare you most of my pictures of birds. But in Uruguay, if you like looking at birds, they are everywhere and it's so fun just for my own pleasure to take pictures of them. But for boarding the ferry, you have to tear yourself away from the windows because if you're tourist class, you have to wait in line to board. As soon as the line starts forming, go ahead and get in it. It's tourist class. A little tight. A little tight. The stuff, but the seat's comfortable. I was feeling really budget conscious the day I bought our ferry tickets. There is a business class and a first class with more room. I'm not sorry we just went with tourist class, it was fine. But if you have the extra bucks, you can get more space and I think champagne on the voyage in first class. 
I sometimes struggle with seasickness, but I didn't feel anything on the crossing. It was smooth, there was plenty of room to walk around. I went ahead and paid extra just to change money on the boat since we only had 36 hours in Buenos Aires and didn't want to spend any time looking for a place to get a better deal. It did rain on us the whole way over and when we got there I was very happy the rain had ended. What I didn't know is we would spend a couple of hours in line going through customs in Argentina. And our room's nice. We're the Tango de Mayo Hotel. So here we are in Buenos Aires and our street is really, it is covered in beautiful buildings. That's what everyone says, you just walk around and look at beautiful buildings. We just stepped out of our hotel and there are some beautiful buildings. <laughs> just as advertised. You often hear Buenos Aires compared to Paris and I can see a resemblance. But the feeling of spaciousness in Buenos Aires lets you know you're not in Europe, you're in the Americas. First impressions of Buenos Aires. Oh. I have a hard time with summaries. <laughs> yes, you do, that's true. I have to think about that stuff. The weather had turned on us, so it was cold and dreary. And unfortunately, what I wanted to see that day was an outdoor echo park. So we came here because I thought it was open on Sundays, but not Mondays. But it's not open today. So, plan B. We still saw quite a few interesting birds just walking on the street by the park, even without going in. If I had to do it again, I would go to one of the big Sunday markets. But honestly, I enjoyed looking at all the birds, even though it was cold and dreary. We realized we were close to the Puerto Madero, which has a lot of bars and restaurants, so we thought we'd walk over there and get something warming to drink. How was your experience here? That was like a very nice scene right there. Getting that drink but actually that proved harder than I ever expected it to be. A report on our. Um, well, it's just funny because hard rock, we Aires. never. Okay, I'm not being like Dinner. holier than thou because I go to Starbucks everywhere and collect mugs. So this is not to say don't ever go to American chains when you're abroad. But I never ever go to hard rock cafes, and it always bothers me that they're everywhere. Honestly, you know, everywhere you go, there's a hard rock cafe. But we're walking around and it's cold, and we need to find a restroom. I thought we'll just go to this Hard Rock Cafe. That was what, an hour ago? Yeah. It was like the weirdest experience. We just sat there. Other people got way Anyway, down. we finally did get a couple <laughs> of drinks and the people were pretty nice once we got them to talk to us. I think maybe it was just a language barrier issue. Although also we were told by one of our guides in Buenos Aires that the level of service in restaurants would not be what we were expecting or what we were used to from the States because she had traveled in the States extensively and could compare the two. So honestly, this area had a festival marketplace feel and it's not why you fly 22 hours to see something different. Something much more interesting though was the El Ateneo bookstore. It has a small English language section so you might not find books there, but it's a glorious old theater that's been restored and it was fun to spend some time browsing in there before our evening plans. Where are we going? We're going to a rooftop posada. Good yeah. Our dinner was in the Palermo area of Buenos Aires. And if I go back, that is the neighborhood I would choose to stay in. I didn't film it all last night at the dinner because it was just such a, it was really a great thing. I really recommend it. It's um, this asada experience and the host basically has dinner with some of his friends and invites you to join them. And yes, you are a paying guest, but it's still, it felt just like a dinner party where you actually got to just visit with people who lived here. So that was super fun and yeah, one of the best travel experiences I've ever had paid for. Um, so you don't get the serendipity of just meeting people, but you definitely get the experience of getting to have long conversations with locals. So we did have one full day the next day, and I'll make another video about that. 
the day I walked like 17 miles around the quirky and beautiful city of Buenos Aires.